While fairly cliched, it is not necessarily untrue that you don't often realize what you have until after it's gone. Enter the year of our Lord, 2002. Back when it seemed like technology was just getting good and maybe video games wouldn't suck one day. However, even in this idealistic and dreamlike past, Relic existed and was still releasing games. While better known for their various strategy games, Relic has also twice previously released third-person shooters. The more recent of these, 2006's The Outfit, is fairly obscure in its own right. It plays essentially like if you were on a COH battlefield in a third-person shooter, and features me as a playable character. Less known is their earlier foray into the genre, Secrets of the Shining Citadel. Okay. This premise sees we'll CIA SOG teams back. attempting to infiltrate Roger. a rogue Hang scientific on, organization thought to be responsible for a number of mysterious number attacks on the outposts there. on the northern ice cap. Ostensibly a squad-based game, there is in fact right more to this than meets the eye. And that head. joke is going to seem more if clever take on any damage, in just a little bit. ASAP and I'll help you out. I'm not carrying any dead bodies In any back. event though, you do spend a lot of this game going solo. I'm locked, loaded, and ready to make shit dead! As mentioned by their intro, each class has a special... Wait a minute. Read this description closely, and then consider the following footage. Then why don't you go find him? No, I think I'm gonna stay right here. Back down, Stoles. You don't want this fight. Quick, remember this! The game has a fairly slow start, exploring the various abandoned outposts and trying to piece together what happened. Oh Christ, what is that? It quickly becomes apparent that all is not well. Here's an example of Relic trying to be a little clever. Way to use an IP Blake. you don't have the rights to. What have you got? One body. Identification says child's no survivor. Ha ha ha. This guy's not oh, laughing, though. He seems pretty convinced Here, you're up to no Blake. good. It's okay. And it Put rapidly becomes apparent no why. You're infected just like all the others. I'm not. You well, that settles it. Good. The report said the hypo contains a chemical that reacts with blood. Do it. We'll soon know, one way or another. Now I'm gonna show you what I already know. From this point forward, things take a turn for the more violent, as it quickly becomes apparent that some people look like people, but are really terrible monsters. It's gotta be said though, the hand blowtorch I'm using here is easily one of the worst weapons in video games. It's easier to hurt yourself with it than the enemy. Killing the enemies in this game is a little bit more interesting than the usual fare. They can only be destroyed by fire, and they flee from anyone with a fire weapon. Sadly, the blowtorch sucks so much they're in very little danger. For variety's sake, the game also includes a number of little enemies. These can be destroyed by gunfire. Another interesting mechanic is you can choose to use your primary weapon with two hands for greater accuracy, or you can use an item in your offhand, such as this fire extinguisher or a first aid kit. It makes a feel in here. Must be all over the place. Gameplay in Shining Citadel generally consists of exploring alone or with a small team, a series of abandoned anarchic outposts, and dealing with whatever beasties lie within. Annoyingly, this is one of the games that allows AI-friendly fire. The game has a hidden right, mechanic, okay. where any time an NPC comes in contact with a monster, they have a chance of getting infected with the cloud yeah, virus sure. and slowly changing into one themselves. Now where the fuck did Sergeant Pierce go? I know yours are around here somewhere. Uh, 
Maybe I can find out what he was up to if I check out this computer. My god. He left his Steam account open. <coughs> what the hell happened? I'm not going anywhere. It's over. What? It got me. I can feel it. I can get you help. You know goddamn well there's only one option here. No. No, I can't do that. You don't have a choice. Look, I won't let you- Come on. Can't handle it. Come on, Pierce. This is crazy. Like my dad always said, if you want a job done right, you gotta do it yourself. Citadel also features a simple NPC control system. You can order them to follow or stay put, and you provide them with their weapons and ammo. There's also a trust system in this game. NPCs okay. won't follow certain orders, and won't allow you to take their weapons if they don't trust you enough. This NPC can't tell if I'm Jewish just by looking at me, so he won't let me do anything. The game features fairly decent enemy variety. During gameplay sequences with large numbers of enemies and allies, things can get somewhat hectic as well. Something that wasn't apparent on my first playthrough is that this is actually, I think, the only piece of music in the game. Of the weapons offered in this game, the shotgun is easily the most satisfactory and the best performed. A trend common for this genre. Part of the game's rather different from the rest. It features the player and his team attempting to defend an ice hut from waves of cloud virus monsters while searching for the radio. Remember, friendly fire isn't. Several stages of the game are spent chasing this damn Norwegian bastard who stole the only functioning radio in the North Pole. We got company. I swear to god, the blowtorch in this fucking game is the most useless piece of shit I've ever seen. There was an honorary award system for worst flamethrowers in video games, this I imagine would win handily. I seriously can't envision a worse flame weapon than this. At least not without falling into the realm of deliberate parody. While exploring, sometimes Relic feels clever and lays an environmental trap to kill you. New enemies and new gameplay mechanics make themselves known throughout the game. These creatures spit napalm that sticks to you and slows you down. An interesting mechanic in a game that features so many flamethrowers is you might end up setting yourself or one of your teammates on fire instead.
The submachine gun in this game is a special pleasure of mine. It's almost improbably inaccurate, capable of posting a five or six foot wide grid of bullets at three feet range. However, it's very satisfying to use in its own kind of way. Reloading when you still have a partial magazine discards what's left of the ammo in that magazine, which can lead to tense moments when bullet frugality is involved. Now, while many of the sounds Area in this looks game secure. are classic 80s sound effects, there are a few weak sound effects as well. Or even outright poor sound design. Consider this. And to think that was without any editing on my part. Overall, the sound in this game is decent, but some things are not entirely authentic. However, the missing sound in some cutscenes does enable me to be a little creative. Nice of the princess to invite us over for a picnic, eh, Luigi? I hope she made lots of spaghetti! Luigi, you fat sack of crap! The princess can't make spaghetti! Well, maybe a Koopa will lend us his! No, can't you get the hint? Maybe a princess made some spaghetti. Come on, Luigi. You fucking them such up instruction book. Well, maybe you made some. Oh, I can't take it anymore. Looks at the saving when Koopas are involved. Something I only noticed in a review of the footage is that apparently when soldiers have had enough and decide to flip out on you, they can grab weapons from their squad and fight back. It's just Overall though, this game's flaws are fairly minor, and it's actually quite an enjoyable experience. If it had included a train sequence or was set on a ship, I would definitely be able to give it a higher rating. As it stands, the biggest problems are all technical, and seem to be products of its era more than anything. As well, total playtime is a bit on the short side at about, ooh, 10 to 15 hours, depending on how well you know the levels. What flavor of shit is that? As it stands, the final rating for this game is 5.25 out of 10. A final note is that this game is incredibly difficult to find on the internet these days. Short of purchasing a physical copy from something like Amazon or eBay, there's pretty much no way to get this game. It was never distributed digitally, and there's no active pirate sites for it. The closest I came is this YouTube video had a link in the description I was able to use. And we all know how sick...